Good morning, little ones. Today we are going on a journey of discovery. Who's ready? What are we going to learn today, teacher? Today we dive into the wonder of nature. Each of you will choose an object from our nature tray and explore it with your sense. Teacher, teacher, why do the pictures of green in this book have two different colors? Ah, oh, an excellent question. Let's gather in a circle and I will share a story about the magic of changing seasons. Good morning, teacher and classmate. After watching our recent video that I just showed you, you might be wondering what is the content about. So let's not waste any time and get dive deep into our topic today. Today we talk about one of the famous pioneer that you have known as well, and her name is Maria Montessori. So our group consists of three members who also known as three pioneers of Minusma. They have me, Mr. Le Arundat. Ms. Jesu Rese and Mr. Tan Sovisa. Moving on to the table of contents. In our topic, we're going to briefly talk about five contents. So the first point which we're going to talk about is about the background of the pioneer. So, who was Maria Montessori? Mary Montessori, born in 1870, she was an Italian physician, educator, and innovator. She was a pioneering figure out on the early childhood. Um, as a woman educator, she also challenged those sexiest stereotypes, state that a woman should not admit it to a higher educational or higher professional program. Her legacy, which also impact on the educational nowadays, known as the develop of the teaching method, Montessori method. So, um, what is the Montessori method? This method focuses on the child center that allows all young students, especially those who were handicapped or psychologically impaired, to do any activity they want, um, like freedom movement, to sit anywhere they want. With this method, it incorrects or motivates students, yes, motivate them to bring out the best and to bring out the passion um, that they want to do. And it is better than to sit like to sit um, as the teacher one and to do as the teacher one. So moving on to the next point, which is about the principle of the learning. So what is the purpose of the principle? Um, this principle are designed to promote the natural development of children and create an environment that in correct independent learning. Let's now get to the first principle, which is about the learning material. This feature method, material and activities based on the observation of the children. For example, Montessori teaching values hand-on learning, so it's shown through tools like the movable alphabet. Kids can make word connecting symbol and sound. This method incorrect self-correction, letting children improve language skill on their own. And the second principle that I'm going to talk about is about the classroom layout. It is designed for children to freely move and choose activity to do. So for the example, the classroom with this layout they have a setup like um, they must have a wide area for group activities and comfy corners for individual or small group tasks. The third principle is about the environmental prioritization. Montessori emphasizes natural light and a calming orderly space. For example, big window could let in a lot of natural lights and the wall might have tons of kid um, educational poster. This makes the place look nice and adds to the learning experience. The next principle is the silent teacher concept. The environment also incorrect learning through self-direct exploration. In this concept, children choose any activity based on their own interests and guided by materials for self-correction. This is quite similar to the teaching method called silent way in which the teacher remains silent all the time and let the student do the activity instead. With all of the principles above, Montessori also thought that kids naturally want to explore what they find interesting without being pushed. In fact, kids are so good at learning by themselves that they often start reading and writing on their own without anyone or without anybody telling them to do it. Education and schooling. The Montessori curriculum focuses on three major types of activities and experiences. One, practical activities. Children engage in practical activities that were aimed at developing life skills and fostering independence. These activities include tasks like setting the table, serving a meal, washing dishes, tying and buttoning clothing, and practicing basic manners and social etiquette. The emphasis on practical life skills was intended to help children become more self-sufficient and capable in their daily life. 2. Sensory activities. Montessori recognized the importance of sensory experiences in a child development. Montessori school designed repetitive exercises to enhance sensory and muscular coordination. 
For example, children learn the alphabet by tracing movable sandpaper letters and they engage with material that involve different textures, size, and shapes to stimulate their senses. 3. Formal skills and studies. The curriculum also included formal skill and studies such as reading, writing, counting, and measuring. Children learn to write before they learn to read, and they use color rods of various sizes and cups to learn concept of counting and measuring. Montessori school use pre-planned teaching devices and material often referred to as a dictated materials on the Montessori apparatus. This material was designed to make the development of practical, sensory, and formal skills easier for children. Due to their direct learning and prepared environment, Montessori educators are referred to as directors, trusters rather than teachers, and under their guidance, children use the Montessori apparatus to develop specific skills, sensory experiences, or intellectual outcomes. Influence on educational practices today, Montessori made a significant contribution to education by emphasizing the formative power of early childhood learning for later lifelong development. Her significant educational contribution included 1. Concept of sensitive periods. Montessori introduced the concept of sensitive period, which are specific phases of development during which children are particularly receptive to certain type of learning. This period are important for sensory, motor, and cognitive development. 2. Belief in self-directed learning. Montessori advocated for an educational environment that where children could choose their activities and engage in learning independently. This fostered a sense of autonomy and self-motivation. 3. School as part of the community and parent participation. Montessori emphasized on the school as part of the community, recognizing the importance of parent participation and support in a child education. This collaborative approach involved parents in the learning pro process and strengthened the connection between the school and the broader community. As of January 2023, in an article titled Global Diffusion of Montessori School, it was documented that 15,163 Montessori School were identified worldwide. Most Montessori School cater to children between the ages of 2 and 6. While the majority of Montessori School are private, there has been more Montessori units in public school system, particularly as magnet or charter school. Montessori training programs, both in university and private institutions, Institution play an important role in preparing directresses to implement the Montessori method effectively. Future directresses are taught the Montessori technique and how to employ dictated materials in a prepared environment. I will teachers and hello everyone. So I'm Vizal and well, let's just give a quick summary of what you have uh, of what you have listened to uh, my two other members. So well, um, so um, uh, Mary Montessori, an Italian of physicians and educator, challenged gender stereotype and left an enduring uh, impact on education. Her Montessori method focuses, uh, focuses on child centric learning, allowing a freedom of movement during class and encouraging students to pursue, pursue their passions. Well, uh, Montessori teaching uh, principles include um, hand on learning, flexible um, classroom layout, prioritized environment, and a silent teaching, uh, teacher concept. Moreover, her curriculum emphasizes practical skills, uh, sensory activity, and for more uh, study using uh, didactic um, materials. And Montessori contributions include the concept of sensitive period, belief in self directed learning, and promoting schools as a community and entire with parent uh, involvement. All right, so now let's move to our reflections. So um, the, first, uh, the first point that we're going to talk or uh, discuss is about a philosophical uh, uh, foundation. So Montessori emphasis on child-centric, cent uh, child-centered, uh, um, a holistic approach to education aligns with our belief that learning should be um, a transformative, uh, individualized journey, uh, nurturing not only connective, but also social and uh, emotional growth. So for example, instead of solely uh, focusing on academic um, achievements, a whole holistic approach may involve uh, incorporating um, activities that uh, develop emotional uh, intelligence, uh, teamwork, and problem solving skills, uh, uh, recognizing that a uh, personal growth uh, extends beyond academic success. Well, another point is that uh, refine, uh, redefine a uh, learning environment. Uh, well, a Montessori uh, careful, uh, carefully uh, prepared environment involves creating classroom setting that culture to diverse uh, needs and paces uh, of individual learners. Well, uh, children and this challenge, uh, the challenge uh, challenges uh, traditional uh, classroom structures, influencing that uh, uh, the belief in uh, creating adaptable spaces that foster a uh, good uh, curiosity and self-directed uh, exploration. Well, for example, uh, adaptable, uh, adaptable spaces may include learning corners, uh, uh, tailors uh, to various uh, subjects or interests, enabling a student to choose where and how they are engaged with the material. So this fosters a sense of uh, autonomy and encourages self-direct uh, exploration. 
Well, uh, the third point is about redefining the uh, roles of educator. So, well, I want to pioneer redefining the roles of teacher as directors rather than teachers. So, um, this philosophy transforms uh, the traditional uh, teacher center model into one uh, where uh, educator as director. So, well, educator uh, or teachers nowadays are not considered to be a uh, to to be a per to be a person or to be a uh, to be people who transfer in uh, knowledge to the students anymore, right? So, they create an environment that encourages uh, students. Uh, to uh, that encourage uh, students to take uh, the lead, explore a topic independently, and engage in self directed learning. And the teacher became the mentor, um, providing guidance and resources while fostering a sense of autonomy in students. For example, instead of uh, dictating a lesson, the teacher might present material and guide uh, discussions, encouraging students to explore and discover and answer themselves. But this was a sense of uh, independent and uh, curiosity. Well, last but not least, uh, last but not least, hand-on and experimental learning. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. One chancery is a commitment to hand-on experimental learning aligned with our belief that students learn best through uh, achieve, uh, achieve uh, active engagement. Sorry, and uh, this principle emphasizes the importance of practical and uh, experience in, uh, in the learning process, enhancing understanding uh, and retention. It uh, supports uh, our philosophy uh, philosophy of uh, incorporating uh, real-world application into education. So we may take a look at some point like of uh, instead of uh, just. Uh, reading about plants, but students might, uh, might pl uh, plant uh, sheets, observe their growth and understand the entire life cycle. So this um, hand-on experience en enhances uh, understanding and retention of the concepts that the students learn. And that is it for our presentation, and thank you all for your paying attention.